Have you seen that finish now? It's matted down. Look at that. It's such a shame that's having to go in it. It's the entire look of the door. So what we're going to have to do is cut these out and then plug these holes. It's a beautiful finish to it. Let's machine. Indeed, sir. It's like a shitty TV. <laughs> Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Joinery with Sweet Cheeks Watson. Sweet Cheeks? That's what I'm calling myself now, Sweet Cheeks. Sweet Cheeks. Sweet Cheeks. Cup of coffee? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Got some updates for you out there in YouTube land. Is there? Um, there's updates. Yeah, there's updates. Th there's... Th they sound like headaches. Yeah, well, no, they're not actually, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, my clients are lovely. Uh, no. They're not headaches. They're bold aches. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. It's, uh, you know, I've just had an artistic falling out with the client. No, not at all. Um, we, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, a shame, but the client, you know, uh, Bradford City Council didn't want the grills on the prison door, so we filmed fitting that kind of tail end of our last day's work, didn't we? So the client basically doesn't want to annoy Bradford City Council, so she's asked if the grills could be, the bars could be removed. So yeah, that's absolutely fine, we can do that. Uh, it's just a shame really, because I do feel that it would affect the look of the door, actually in quite a big way, but, you know, this is for a client, this isn't for me, so you know the client gets what the client wants. Um, it isn't too much of a problem to kind of take the grills out, it's just a shame really. Because what I'd really like to do is finish the door with the grills in situ, photograph the door and then take the grills out, but we can't do that. So it's going to have to be, they're going to have to come out fairly early at some point today, stroke tomorrow. So let's have a, yeah, let's go and get a coffee and then we'll get this, uh, we'll get this mother started. What are you spraying on there? Just matte black spray paint. These were bought at a antique place in Harrogate. So they're in keeping with our project. Got a bit of detail on them. I don't think they detract from the door, but it's I think you fun. missed a bit here. Okay. Excuse me then. That's it. And there actually. Yeah, there we go. So the client knows that they're second hand, they're recycled, but you know, isn't that responsible? That's a responsible thing. There's nothing wrong with those handles, there's nothing wrong with that letterbox. Spring's still really good. I've got it propped open at the moment. Um, these handles, I mean, it's like, it's kind of almost, I daren't tell you what I paid for those. I, mean, I can't even tell you what I paid for those. You know, I was gonna make handles for this project, it would probably have taken me the best part of the day to do that. And you know, when you look at these, what I was going to do, which gets me onto this next kind of thing that I'm going to show you, is I was going to make a circular loop out of steel. Circular loop. That was then going to get fit to a spigot, which was then going to go into a round through the door in, in, uh, where the quarter, inch, the quarter inch bar would have then gone between the two. 
By the time I'd finished machining and making those, it would have taken a day. So in terms of cost, in theory, you know, we're talking about £200 for a pair of door knockers, really, if you know, if you're getting paid kind of what you should be. So these are in keeping, they're nice heavy, they're solid steel, um, they've got some detail on which I think will match in with the door really nicely. Um, we've given them a light kind of wipe over and a steel brush, but uh, let me just show you this quickly. So this is what we were going to make. We were going to make this, which will be nicely up to heat now. We were going to make something like that. So as you can see, hoop spigot here going through into the square now why I've heated this one up to red hot is because it's seized because I actually think this is a lot older than uh, this was sold to me for like next to nothing and I do think this is uh, a lot older than those ones let me just get onto that spigot there you go look at that just works it works it just so that's it and now that is freed up we haven't had to jam the hell out of it bottom. Let's give that a little... I think this is kind of a lot older than a lot older than the person thought it was. I think it's Georgian or at least Victorian. So I think this is probably the best part of a couple hundred years old. Okay we're not going to be able to fit the escutcheons today because we can't fit the escutcheons because we're going to fit the lock in situ. Why we're doing that is because we're going to essentially not alter the keep in the doorway. We're going to reuse the keep as it stands. So we're going to we're going to chop the lock in to the door on site. That means we're not making a butchery job of the uh, door jams. So we can't fit the escutcheons because we don't know where the lock's going until we're on site. We can't fit that because that doesn't belong on the door. That belongs on the frame to catch the sliding bolt. I hear you ask, what can we make then? Well, we've already made our sliding gate for the back. Um, this is not getting let into the door like all the other furniture. This is just going to sit on the outside of the door. Copper rivets again all the way around. And then we're going to have this sliding gate in here. What we're going to do is a little extra, a little optional extra is, and I've got it in my pocket here, I machined up this little beauty. Now I think what we're going to do with this is we are going to have this as a little sliding gate on a peephole through the oak. So it'll want to sit there and what you'll do is you'll pull it to the side and you'll be able to see through. We'll position that in the middle of the um, window like so. So we're probably going to, I don't know if we're going to recess this in or just have this surface mounted. Recessing in would look quite nice with a little machined out section, but we'll just see how far we've got. This, interestingly enough, is a cast iron set screw or nut from an old, um, well, what would you call it? A mill. So this is off a machine, like a, um, from an old mill from round here. I can't remember where I got it, but I know it's there. I've got another one tucked away somewhere. I'll show you it. But I just thought, I was looking for something like that and I thought, wow, that's quite nice and it's in keeping. And look, there's our little, our little skull on the peephole. A little skull touch mark that Glenn at GS Toms did for us. Mm. Cool. Okay, come on, let's, uh, let's get on with it. What are we going to do first? <sighs> Have you done the wood? No, we haven't done the wood, so we've got a little bit of really quick machining to do. Um, have we got any wood that'll work? Let's just have a little look at that, if that's eight inches well, it's wide. It's good to know that you plan this all out and, you know, you're on top of it. Look, there's the sweet cheek. Sweet cheek, Let me just check it out. Check it out, Holmes. Yeah, I did. I got this piece of oak ready. Yeah, whatevs. First off, we're going to make this to 22. Which way are we going to have the grain? Well. There's only one. No, they could have it either way. Well, it, it works in a different way. I actually think the grain should be countered. Actually, that's not bad. That's usually a lot worse than that because it's been chainsawed through. Okay, well, so I'm just going to roughly just kind of sketch this out and then we'll go from there. Okay. 22. might just get you to give us a hand moving this. Have you seen that finish now? It's matted down. Look at that. It's such a shame that's having to go in it. It's the entire look of the door. So what we're going to have to do is cut these out and then plug these holes. I'm just thinking that 
the piece of, the piece of glass isn't going to be here today. It's a beautiful finish, though, isn't it? Just watch uh, that thing that's picking up those. Bong. Okay. Bong. Bong. Got a nice fit there, nice tight fit. That seems to that seems to roll. So any adjustments we can make to that after it's in. Let's uh, let's plane it to thickness. And there is a classic example of crap all over our machine. So yeah, why you don't do this? Because we're now instead of doing joinery, we're doing housekeeping. So you should never store stuff on top of a machine because it's just a pain in the ass. Because you, you're moving the problem on, aren't you? This isn't going to make it into the film. And that means it will be in the film. I know, it bloody Just does. through pure spite. <laughs> I know. <laughs> pure hatred and yeah. venom. I mean, you know, it, what can you say? I'm lucky in that I've even got this amount of space to work in. Some people don't. But, you know, what have I done with it? You've ruined it. Well, what everyone does with a workspace. You, it gives you the ability to say yes to things you should probably say no to. And what I mean by that is that you end up, oh, I've got some, uh, I've got some old tap. Do you want some old tap? Oh yeah, because I've got loads of space to store the old tap in. I mean, have a look at that pile of wood behind you. Oh, this stuff that I'm balancing on. Yeah, so there's a uh, look solid at oak tabletop that someone gave me for nothing. There's a 300 year old piece of oak there. There's there's this thing here that comes off the back of a threshing machine because you say yes to it. So anyway, enough of me walloping on. Isn't that what this channel is all about? Well, it's seemingly it's getting to that point, isn't it? Actually, it's got a good shot from that underneath through. There's a good shot, is there? Oh, look at this. You I'll ready? You tell them when you're ready. Yeah, go on then. So actually, that's pretty flat. So I'm going to look at the grey. Oh, I think we'll go It's got a bit of give in it there, so it's like a mill or two. Okay, right, first things we're going to do is just square off the end.
nice and tight, but it's got something on it, hasn't it? That's our gate. Let's go and do what we need to do to it. Come on through into the other shop, Mark. It'll be an ace. This is essentially our peephole. So that's going to kind of go there. But what we need to do is find the middle of this. Dropsy. Dropsy. Right, we want something of a hole, don't we, Uncle Mark? because there's no magnification or any of that rubbish going into this. Don't you have to come and talk about this thing as well? What thing? This, well, this whole thing is about me talking. This uh, Georgian thing that you think you've oh, got. Yeah. Do we have to? Well, you teased it earlier and then you just sort of left it. Just left it? Like hang hanging like a... Hanging like a dragon. 30 mil. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Cover the... 35 mil. Bosh, bosh, bang, bosh. 35 mil. Why I'm drilling on this below is so we get a neat burst out. Then what I do is I line this up. You've got a little centre spot and I can just see where that's hitting. And then I Hopefully we've got a really nice burst burst out. Yeah, nice and tidy on the underside. So what I might do, I might just put a radius on that. Okay. On the outside, yeah? Yeah. You, you, you enjoy your radiuses, don't you? Now, this is the idea. I oh, see, I know what you're gonna say. What? Um, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say? Do we rebate this? <laughs> Do we knock this in and basically the idea being is that this would be captive. So we use the um how's it gonna look? No. No we don't rebate it. Do we okay, so that is essentially what's gonna happen. Yeah. It's gonna be like that. That's enough, isn't it? Yeah. It's enough we're getting. You're it. talking about rebating it so it sits in a it sits pendulum. in a kind of sits in so you can move it so far and then it <laughs> catches. The only issue with that would be that you know, no. <laughs> so let's see what we're going to attach it with. Do we just go with a brass screw? A nice brass screw. Oh, what about that? What about that little copper rivet? Like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah? The yeah. rivet's excited him. It's the rivet. Oh, the rivets he's got power. rivet joy. Well, these are actually proper little copper rivets, these. Rivet so I'm joy. just going to stick that there for Uncle Mark to. I don't know what size they are. I don't know anything about them. don't even know where I got them from. You can get them, but they're blooming expensive. So let's have a little look. What have we got here on this? Ah, oh, shit. I've spray painted my calipers. Ten and a half mil, and the shank is just under five mil. So I think we're gonna drill four mil in there. Let's have a look at our depth. And then probably have to nip the end of that, unless I can find one that's shorter in here. That's shorter. We won't need to nip the head off that one. Okay, so we're at just under two inches. Just file a start on this copper, and we'll come back to him. File a little radius on the bottom of that rivet. Okay, so I think before we do that, obviously we need to give this its a sand. We're going to do a little radius on the back. I think we're going to have to, aren't we? I'm going to use my Winnie the Pooh 
what do you call it, router. Oh God. That's Why, does it like honey? No, it's just poo. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's worn out really, if I'm honest. It's kind of, it's knackered. I just use it for little, it's great for this because it, it, you don't need some monster router for this job. It kind of skips, there you go, when you're tightening it up, which isn't very good. But it should be all right for this kind of job. It's very stiff to operate. Oh. It's just a piece of that. But I've got more routers than Soft Tom. <laughs> you know Soft Tom, don't you? <laughs> I'm aware of him. Are you aware of his work? That is going to need a little sand. Do we do it on both sides? Just a sec. Let's just have a little look. We've got the clearance. No, we haven't, so it would show. Does that make sense? So if we, we ground that out, you'd see the bottom of that radius. Wouldn't look any good. Okay. So let's give that its uh, final sanding to uh, finish and then we'll uh, have a look at all of this other stuff. You going to uh, coat it, lacquer it? Uh, yes we are, but um, we'll probably just get it flamed up. Ah, flaming it of course. Piece what? of wood isn't complete until you've burnt it, is it Al? No. Nope. Screw the guy who says we shouldn't be burning wood. <laughs> You're a dirty shed. You like to burn wood for the simple pleasure burning stuff gives you. I suppose it's the uh, it's the pyro in us. Let's just give this its final sanding. Get rid of all those machine marks. Just looking for the chatter marks of the planer. Try and show you some if we can find some. There you go. I don't know if you can just see that there. Can you just see that little there? Can you see oh. that? So that's essentially what we're removing, those chatter marks. Point yeah. to them. Just here you can see these little lines that the planer blades hit as it's fed in. So that's what we're removing. In fact, actually, when you tip it like that, you can see them all along here. So that needs more sanding. Let's just do this. I like to sit it on something. That way you can get the edge. But the thing is, in this instance, the edge isn't important, except the front and back edge, actually. So let's make sure we get that correct. So that's bottom to us. So let's let's hold that on. Oh, fuck's sake. Let's get rid of that. Fucking hell. Dropsy! Ah, oh, that could be an expensive one as well. These things don't like being dropped. Don't like standing up either, seemingly. Bastards. Check again. So we need this edge doing. Eat that, stain guy. we've got with that is it would be really nice to fit the gate right at this moment but we've got to finish the bloody timber underneath 
So I think the best bet for us to do is to get the finish on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this painted up um, and then we're going to cut out the letterbox and get the letterbox fitted. Then we'll come back to this, this should be dry at that point, and then we'll show you this kind of what we're going to do with it. Even with the glass? Well the problem is, is the glass is arriving today so I'm kind of waiting on a phone call. I don't think we've had one yet have we? No, we haven't had one. Problem is, is if we put that grate on and you can't then get the glass in, we're kind of screwball Jackson. You've got to put the glass in first. I think we do, we'll just simply, yeah, do we? Actually. Okay, sorry, what did I just say? We were going to get that lacquered up. Yeah. We've got another little tiny bit of lacquering when we let the post box in. So rather than mix up lacquer to waste, we'll do all the lacquering in one hit. So actually we won't lacquer that now. What we're going to do is go and cut the uh, post box into the um, door. Here is our letter box. Nice strong spring on that, that's what I checked. These are really expensive and we got such a deal because we just kind of bought it from a, a bin full of kind of stuff that was at this antiques place. So what we're going to do first is take those out because we don't want to use those. We're not that type of person. Ooh, sticky, sticky, bang, bang. Right, we won't use those because they are going to end up getting threaded. Right, so just a little point here that people might find quite interesting. So this is your letterbox, okay? This is your back of your letterbox, right? So what they're asking you to do here is basically machine out this hole this size through your door. Have a look at that, it's massive. Why don't they put these lugs, well, why don't they just increase the size of this and pop those somewhere else? Because as it stands, these are an absolute pig because you have to be so bang on with them. We're fine, we can do that, but if you're fitting these on site, they are a pain in the ass to do. And most people just turn up with a jigsaw, they don't make their own jig like we're gonna make. We're gonna start, we're gonna do this a different way actually. We're gonna fit this like, um, not how we fitted the aperture for the um, window. Yo! Yeah. Yo, yeah, turn out the lights and I'll glow. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to take some measurements off this now. We're going to jigsaw it out to a rough size, as, as neatly as we can. Then we're going to make up a jig for our router, which will just tidy the entire thing up. So what it will mean is the router isn't going to be chewing through like what it was, a full width of the router blade, which for a lot of people, for me it's fine, I've got lots of experience kind of, you know, working a router like that. But for a lot of people, you'd end up kind of with a kick or something like this that's just going to ruin the whole thing. So let's fit this a different way. Yeah, it's the only place it can go, in it? Can it poo? Dropsy number three. Dropsy number f***ed up my pen. And then let's work it back this way. So it's 38 plus the one plus the two and a half. So it's there. Right, so what we should have here is this. Just have a double check measure. Sorry mate, uh, good news. That was uh, them from Niddle Windows up in Knaresborough. The glass is ready to be picked up. So let's just pile it through there, bit into a bit of space. Just checking when we're bursting through. I don't want to make a mess of that. What we're going to do is we're going to leave ourselves some clearance so we're not going to go tight to the line. Let's just see how we... Okay. I'm only going in a little bit because I just want to see how we're cutting. Yeah, that looks fine. Why I did that is because if this is breaking out and leaving a raggedy line, I want to work that line inside so that it's not tearing out nice timber and it doesn't look like a pig on the other side. Okay. Give my 
myself somewhere to work. Love that wind today. First bit post through the letterbox. <laughs> I always oh. like to say that, Joe. Oh, genius. Far more than we need. Far more than we need, but it's in. Okay. Let's route. Look at that, some good routing. Let's take it down another 10 mil. Oh, you're just getting the magical shots, aren't you now? Yeah. You're getting all artistic. Shall we... Uh, I'm lying on ground. I know, backwards and upside down. Sawdust in my eyes. Sounds like an 80s classic. You know it. That can be on the album. That is lovely. So what we need to do now is allow for these. Such a stupid design. Such a stupid design. You have to do so much work to do it neatly. I've seen some letterboxes fitted like, they look they've been fitted like by a gorilla. A gorilla with no sense of decency. So uh, I like to think that we do a little bit of a nicer job than that. That, so I mean, bloody hell, we have to go all the way up to here. And that's for these little knobbly bits. Yeah. That's my uh, technical term today, knobbly, knobbly bits. bits. And then we just need to make sure that we're covered. focusing on Oh, sorry, thing. mate. Yeah, there you <laughs> go for your knobbly bits. We've got to get the knobbly bits. Are you freehand routing? Yep. It's the name of the game. Freehand routing, it's the way of the chief. Freehand f***ing routing. You'll have to bleep out the F word there. Maybe just leave it in. Yeah, maybe, maybe not say it. it. Yeah, oh, okay. Freehand routing. It's the way of the chief. And I'm the freaking chief! It's a lot of effort to fit a letterbox, isn't it? That's why I used to have a... I used to have like a... charge for fitting letterboxes. You mean you'd charge people to do some work? Oh yeah. That is revolutionary. Well, it's a great way of making money. It's a great way of staying in shape. Oh, we're not wide enough. Well, that's good. Just nibble up on it. Nibble up on it. Just get it bang on. Happy Gilmore. Oh, look done. at that. Look what he's done. First time on there as well. Look at that. Bangy, bangy, boom, bang. Bang on. 
bangy bangy boom bang eh yeah and it works and shiz it works and the noise okay it's on it's done well i mean the glass is ready can we go and get the glass can we go and get the glass and offer it up yes Welcome to Joinery Half Hour with Sweet Cheeks Watson and Camera Boy. Camera Boy, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> He's useless. 